Hello and welcome back to OmniFit TV. This is your host Omar speaking and I am back. It's been a couple of days since I've last done a video and well it's just good to be back. Uh, I'm going to start this video out by talking about Leicester City. If you haven't read the article that I posted on Instagram, I'm just going to go over a couple of points that I shared from it. Just reconnecting laptop cool. Okay. Leicester are currently, in my humble opinion, the best run club in England from a valuable standpoint. From running a club in terms of value, being a grassroots football institution that has credibility that isn't just based on the right financial decisions. This is a community. It's different than any other club in the country. And if not for Leicester, I would have called Man City the best run club in England because, as we have all seen, most of City's decisions, if not all of them, have been second to none in terms of the branding of the club, the marketing, managerial appointments, players signed. They've signed a ton of players, some of which, uh, a lot of which didn't do so well. They've had some of the best managers in world football in their dugouts. And, well, I can't help but place Leicester City on the same pedestal because they've just done so well from everyone working at the club, from the ownership, right down to every single player on the pitch. And yesterday's FA Cup final was an example of what it means to truly run a club right and build a community where the club has been built. Allow a sense of belonging to truly be present among the people who support the club, not just as fans, but as part of the club itself. And I think Leicester have that. They have that on any other club in England. There's such a sense of clarity in regards to the communication that the fans feel they have with their club, in regards to how the fans feel about the owner, about how they feel that their owner is just close to them. He's not a distant entity who people don't see uh, in the stadium, in, in video footage maybe. You have owners like Liverpool's who barely ever show up. The fans barely see. The fans don't have much of a connection with. The Glazers at Man United who the fans can't stand. There isn't much direct communication with the club's fan base, with the club's community. Either one of them. And then you look at Iowa. Lester's owner, Lester's current owner, who is the son of Vichai, uh, God rest his soul, who died in a helicopter accident outside of the King Power Stadium in 2018. I think, in my opinion, that is perhaps the most tragic event to have occurred in English football for a while. Such a good businessman and a good owner, someone whose values took root in the club, and you could just tell by how the fans felt about him, about how he felt about them in return, how he tried to allow there to be a sense of a sense of belonging. Just making the fans feel at home at the King Power Stadium. Vichai just did such a great job and you could tell he had a vision. Lester have proven as of yesterday that that Premier League winning season that they had was no fluke. And I, as a Chelsea fan, should be a lot more angry. But I'm not. They've done such a good job. You can't discredit them. You can't discredit their appointment of Brendan Rodgers as well. Who, mind you, as of yesterday, became the first manager to win the FA Cup and the Scottish Cup since Sir Alex Ferguson. The man is an elite company. And Brendan is, again... One of the best examples I can give you of a manager who's genuinely started from nothing. Contrary to the current state of management where you have players who, like Pirlo for instance, I mean, I can give Pirlo, I can give an example of Pirlo because a day before Serie A season started, a day before this season started in Serie A in Italy, he didn't even have his coaching badges, he had an exam. He had his final exam to get his coaching badges done. And at that point in time, he was Juventus manager. He hadn't even managed the game. Brendan Rodgers started working at a warehouse. 
to provide for his family. All while getting his coaching badges at Reading. And after that, he moved to Chelsea via Mourinho. And the rest is history. Look at, the wor- look at the work he did with Swansea City. And then the work he did with Liverpool, almost getting them towards the title. And then people started to criticize him, saying he wasn't there altogether. He, was, he didn't have that killer instinct as a manager. He didn't have that cutting edge needed to win trophies. He went to Scotland. He went to the SPL. And he led Celtic to an undefeated season for the first time that a Scottish side had done that since 1899. He won everything there was to win in Scotland. He came back with Leicester, and you could, t- you could see the difference. You could tell how different Leicester became under Rodgers. And it's not just him. It's the club's recruitment policy. It's the players that they choose to sign, the amount of money that they choose to spend, and how well they treat their fans. And yesterday's FA Cup final, in my humble opinion, it wasn't that good a final. Neither team was that clinical in front of goal. I mean, we went close to 55 or 60 minutes with only a single shot on target. And it was Chelsea's. And even then, it wasn't that potent. Schmeichel put up a hell of a game. And it was just... I mean, I could go on and on as a Chelsea fan about the VAR decisions that I didn't that I wasn't convinced with. But this isn't about that. The VAR is not the topic today. What is, is Leicester. And you can't help but commend them. And I think the one thing that proved to the fans just how much their current owner loves the club is the fact that he went down from the stadium onto the pitch and celebrated with the players. He picked up the FA Cup, he held it in his hands, and you could tell. You could just tell by the look on his face that this meant everything to him. That in his own way, he kept his word to his father. Because he released a statement after his father's passing and said that he would run this club right. And you could tell that he kept his word. And if you just look at the players and how they felt having them on the pitch with them, having him on the pitch with them, excuse me, look at their faces. Look at the celebration between the manager, the players, the staff, and the owner. There is value in that club. There is so much value in what Leicester City have done. And if they remain consistent, mind you, they'll only get better. And it's fair to say that they are now part of the Big Six instead of Tottenham who still have yet to win a trophy since 2005. Leicester have won the league and an FA Cup in the span of a couple of years. I think it's fair to give them credit where it's due. As a club, in terms of players, as an institution, and as a community. I think everything that Iowa has done... Everything the Vichai has done before him, had done before him, excuse me, everything the Vichai had done before him, these things should be studied by other owners in England. It baffles me just how well the club has been run. And Leicester aren't necessarily the richest club in England, they're not one of the richest clubs in England, but they have this. They have a pull power now. They have pull. Because their project is genuine. It's a genuine grassroots football project. It's practical. It's pragmatic. It's simple. It's precise. And it's clear. And when you put the shirt on, when you see the players who put the shirt on, they go out there and they want to play for the club. That is what you want. When you sign players, that is what you want when you get a manager. You want these people to work for the betterment of the club. Not for, the, not for themselves individually as a priority, but for the club first. And in knowing that when you do what you do for the club, you do it for yourself as well. When you prioritize the team, when you prioritize the culture of the club, the renewed culture. Mind you, back in 2009, Leicester were still in League One. 
It's been close to two decades now, over a little over two decades. And they've won two prestigious trophies in England. And you look at some players like Wes Morgan and Jamie Vardy, who've been there through it all. Literally, they were, they were with Leicester almost through everything. And they're still here. And you could call it a touch of class or you could call it a tactical decision. But Rodgers bringing on Wes Morgan at the end of the game yesterday was quite classy either way. And despite the players that they sold, they still managed to sign the right ones. To keep themselves afloat. And to do better. To be consistent. To be positively consistent. And I can't help but feel like I appreciate Leicester's presence in the EPL. I appreciate the club that is Leicester City. As a football fan, when I put... As a football fan, you don't just have to support your club. You have to support what's best for football. You have to support what's best for the sport overall, right? And Leicester is that. Leicester is exactly that. And if you look at Lille in France, for example... What Luis Campos has done, the sporting director of Lille, how, the, how that club has been run, how they, they're so close to winning Ligue 1. Competition. Competition based on, based on an actual vision. Based on proper administration. That is what's good for football. And it's... I mean, yesterday's FA Cup final... It's going to live on in my memory. I'm sure it's going to live on in everyone else's memory as neutrals. Or as fans of either club, mind you. Obviously, I can't help but congratulate every single Leicester fan, if any, are probably watching this video right now. I'm happy. I'm happy for Leicester. I am disappointed and I am sad and I feel crushed as a Chelsea fan. But I, I am very happy for Leicester. I'm happy for Brendan Rodgers. I'm happy for Iowa. I'm happy for the players. Players who literally fought to get uh, to, to become this good. Players like Vardy, who was playing in League One for Fleetwood Town. He just won his F he just won an FA Cup. He has played in every single stage of the FA Cup. And I'm sure you know that Premier League clubs don't play in every stage. It's surreal. Talk about coming from absolutely nothing and getting to the absolute top. And earning it, they earned their place yesterday. Leicester had lost four FA Cup finals prior to the one that they played yesterday. And they were the one team to have lost the most number of finals without winning the Cup. And they finally won it. And it was iconic. It was genuinely iconic. Granted, I don't feel Chelsea had the proper killer instinct, which has been our problem for most of the season. To kill off the game. And I may have been dismayed by certain refereeing decisions. But again. VAR needs its own video. What Leicester has done has more value than what any other football club has done for the longest time in world football. In European football. It's different. It's so practical and it's just it's based in value their whole project's core has been gaining value allowing the club's badge to mean something something new to set a new standard and not to do it just because we have money which is a key component they've done everything well business wise but the fact that before the money came in they had the right ideas. They had the right ideas and they kept going. And look at them. Any other Premier League club would kill to have the season they've had. Third in the Premier League, close to qualifying for the Champions League next season, which is going to allow them to sign better players. No disrespect to any of the players they have. They could sign proper backup in order for their squad depth to allow them to actually fight in the competition they won an FA Cup any of the current big six teams apart from Man City would have been quite happy 
to finish the season where Leicester are close to finishing it. And that just goes to show how well they've done, the standards that they've set, and how the culture of the club has truly shifted. And I hope they remain consistent. I genuinely hope they remain consistent because things will only get better. You want teams in England, in Italy, in France, in Spain, in Holland, in every league in the world to be managed properly from top to bottom. You want there to be value in your club. You want fans to feel like they belong, like there is a community around the club, that it's not just the shirt and the badge, that the shirt and the badge mean more. Every single time. That the fans in the stadium feel like they're a part of what's going on on the pitch. That the owner is present and that he has a healthy relationship with the fans to show them that you are everything in this club. You are the reason I am here. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to honor the agreements that have that have that have we have. I'm going to honor the agreements that have come between us. I'm going to make sure that you're as happy as I want to be for this club because I love this club. When that is communicated to the fans of any club by any owner, and when he puts his money where his mouth is, because that's key here. When owners put their money where their mouth is, and when they do as little talking as possible and act, which is what Vichai did, which is what Iowat has done, then you know that this is for the betterment of the sport. And if every club, if every club had that, no matter where we were in the league, if every club had players who fought for the badge, who did as best as they could, managers who had the passion to instill an actual idea in these players that they could be better, that they could do more, and that they will, and that they will be more, the sport would be a lot healthier. The spectacle of football would not be dying. And this is my love letter to Leicester City. Congratulations. I think you've won everyone over. And I hope you can remain consistent. To any Leicester fan who's watched this, congratulations to you. Enjoy it. Drink it in. Just have as much fun and live with the joy for as long as possible. Tell the story to your kids. You're going to tell it to your grandkids one day if you live that long. You know, just take it in. And I hope, to be honest, that Leicester can challenge for the PL next season. Because we need competition in the Premier League now more than ever, now that City's actually won the league without the number nine. City won the league without a proper striker. With a good defensive this, with good defensive displays. It's just... The fact that Guardiola has proven me and most fans wrong with how well he's been able to handle the situation this season and how despite how weak or weaker they were, they still managed to claw their way up. Look at the table and you'll see that no teams have that cutting edge now. Not many teams are going to be able to challenge them next season. And I hope that Leicester are one of them. One of the teams that will, in fact, challenge them. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I had to shoot this video again. And I'm actually happier with the outcome right now. So, <laughs> if you don't follow us on social media, the links are in the description below. Congratulations once again to Leicester City. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And I will see you next time, The Whistleblowers. Cheers, everyone.